Sean Tan has come a long way since taking art classes at Balcatta High School. He's been writing and illustrating award-winning books and graphic novels, working with Hollywood's Best on films like WALL-E and collecting an Oscar for his own animated short film, The Lost Thing. This week he returned to where it all began, unveiling a series of his earliest works depicting the streets of suburban Perth. It's an ex exhibition, rather, that he says is the most personal of his career. He discussed why with our reporter, Claire Nichols. You've said these are some of your most personal works. Why are they so special to you? Well, a lot of them are, are literally about the places in which I grew up. Um, they're scenes of streets that I lived on, not actually moving very far from the front door, uh, paintings of friends, um, landscapes that I would see all the time and often wondered why they weren't represented elsewhere. I'd never seen anyone paint suburbs like Hillary's and Craigie and so on. Um, so that, that's quite, it felt like original to me at the time to be doing that kind of work and, and even now I refer back to it a lot as a source of inspiration for things I'm doing, you know, 10, 15 years later. You could see beauty in the streets of Perth? Yeah, there's beauty and ugliness. It's an interesting mix, and I think that's the key word, is that it's interesting. Things don't have to be wonderful and pretty to be interesting. Um, often the, the discrepancies between beautiful um, streets and natural light and so on, and some ugly streets and um, the kind of thoughtless incursions that we make on the landscape, those can be fascinating. They, they reveal a lot about our character. about your childhood in Perth. Did you always know you were going to be an artist? Uh, I always wanted to be an artist, like if you asked me when I was um, a little kid. Second only to being an astronaut was being an artist. Um, but as I grew up, I had big doubts about that because it, it always occurred to me that it's a very difficult way to make a living. And growing up in the northern suburbs, I didn't meet any artists, at least not until I went to high school in Balcatta and had a, some exposure to practicing artists who came to teach us and that's when I first thought wow you can actually you know make a living as an artist these that's these people's jobs it's not just a hobby. A lot of your work seems to focus on belonging and being an outsider were you an outsider as a kid? I think everyone thinks they're an outsider as a kid especially as a teenager and a lot of the work in this exhibition really started coming together in my late teens is a very intense period for me. Um, an intense period of, of emotionally, but also in terms of solitude and introspection. You know, who am I? What am I doing? Where do I live? Um, what's my place in the world? You know, what's my philosophy about things? And the most common answer to that question is I don't know. Um, my solution has always been to draw as a way of finding out. Just sit in front of something and draw it and think about it. and um, I guess forming some sense of belonging that way because it didn't, it was always a troubled sense of belonging. I think maybe growing up in Perth, that's not uncommon either. Um, our landscape is in such a state of flux that uh, it's quite normal to have a feeling of um, uncomfortable identity here because things are changing all the time. Um, and that's certainly true of my childhood in the 80s. In Hillary's, that whole suburb is just transforming constantly. Looking at this work, it seems to be very different to the very detailed pictures we know you for. When you look at these works, do you see the artist you were going to become? Yeah, sort of. To me, I look at them and I still think they're, they're, they're far too fussy <laughs> and too laboured. And um, I see that in my illustrative work also. But. Uh, one great thing about painting, especially painting things that you know very well personally, is you reach a moment of, of clarity, of n a lack of concern for detail or fussiness or self-consciousness, and you just paint. And uh, occasionally, you know, you, you have those sweet moments and um, it's almost like a return to childhood when you were just mucking around, not caring about the consequences. And I think some of the work here captures an element of that. To Perth and Melbourne, this one's for you too. Yeah, 
you're most famous now for The Lost Thing. How does your life change when you're an Academy Award winner? Um, the biggest change uh, as a result of winning an Oscar is people asking me, how has your life changed? <laughs> um, so that's the, that's the main thing. Uh, the answer is, I guess, um, slightly less glamorous. It hasn't really changed that much. It would have been pretty exciting. Oh yeah, well obviously that it changed my life immediately at the time because it was so crazy and exciting and uh, um, no surrealist work I've ever done matches the experience of turning up to that event because it was like, what am I doing here? I've like warped into a parallel universe um, as a strange interloper and then just as quickly warped back out again to my little home studio in suburban Australia. Um, quite relieved to be back there actually. Uh, so, um, I don't know, it's, you know, just a reminder that, that life is strange and unpredictable and um, if you just follow the things that you enjoy doing, they can lead to very unexpected places. Claire Nichols with Sean Tan.